Rock Solid Agents. My name is Dan Roshan. Today, I am really pleased to be joined with Karen Briscoe, who is a an agent, uh, a colleague of mine here in Northern Virginia, and somebody that has um, just been a successful agent for a very long period of time, and has also been somebody that I've looked up to, and somebody that has become a published author of multiple books. And today we're going to talk about those books and the lessons that you share in those, Karen, and, and what you've learned from, from writing them and, and what you've learned from, um, you know, from the process. So hello, Karen. Hey, Dan, great to be here. And we actually met at a recently at a book club. Yeah, I know. So met at a book club and said, let's talk about books. Let's do it. And some real estate. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us, Karen. So, before we jump into the books, tell us a little about, about who you are, how you got started in the real estate business, and um, a little bit about that journey. So so maybe take us back to the beginning. Oh, wow. You want to go back to the beginning. So commercial real estate out of college, and I did residential lot development with Trammell Crow in Dallas, Texas. Married, had our children, and my husband's career moved us to the Washington, D.C. metro region, McLean, Virginia, in uh, about 25 years ago. Okay. And actually, I stayed home with our children. I was a primary caregiver. My husband's career meant a lot of travel. And so I was the point person and wanted to reenter the workforce when my kids got a little older. And I went back into commercial. So I was working uh, for the Starbucks company, had the Nextel account. And that was right around the tech bust. And I don't know if you remember those years. <laughs> uh, but I, Starbucks lost the account. I would have had to go work for Nextel. Nextel uh, would have hired me. However, they, they were in disposition mode. And the one thing I've learned about real estate is there's no money in disposition. <laughs> and so I, my neighbor said, well, why don't you become a residential agent? And to be quite honest, People on the commercial side, we just don't flip over easily. Um, and yet I found it to be my calling because on the commercial side, I was really known for my hard skills, my hard knowledge, which is market knowledge, negotiation, strategy. I'm I'm really good at that. The part that is not so um, common in the in the commercial side, which is very common in the residential side, that is the relationships and the people. And I really found that I loved helping people in their change and their transition and immediately met with success. I sold 12 houses my first year, which uh, was a good run. And I had a broker say to me, well, if you could sell 12 houses in a year, that's one a week. Well, I mean, one a month, you could sell one a week. And I'm like, what are you crazy? I mean, that's a crazy number. And yet that planted in my brain. And I started, as often happens, looking for, well, who does that in my market area? And that led me to Sue Huckabee, who uh, was at the time number 10 in the nation. And I knew her from church. And so I was blessed that she asked me to join her team. And then a couple of years later, she asked me to partner with her in 06. And then sadly, she passed away in 08. And I don't know about your market area in 08, but I know the Northern Virginia market area. Uh, that was the um, when the financial markets crashed. <laughs> and that was the same month that Sue passed away. And so it was devastating to my business and my, um, you know, what I, I had learned and everything, the mentor, my mentor. And so I set about rebuilding because she wanted me to carry on and I'm a resilient person. And that was when I um, moved the company over to Keller Williams and Lizzie Conroy was a past client and also a friend from church joined me as partner. We've been partners for a decade. So we have a team known as the HBC group, which is Huckabee Briscoe Conroy in Northern Virginia, predominantly Lizzie is licensed in DC and Maryland, but we focus on Northern Virginia. And in 2019 year to date, we have about um, almost 90 million in business and our average sales price is a million. So you could do the numbers. Sure. <laughs> we're in a, we're in McClay, Great Falls. We're in the most expensive zip code. And so we, we flip um, expensive burgers. Um, we talked earlier about how I, 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 allude, I grew up in the restaurant business. And so I, I, I um, <clears throat> refer to selling out this is flipping burgers, but um, so that is my uh, career as a, a, a in real estate and as a residential agent. Um, so then a few years ago, I felt like there was something more that was mine to do. 
And that's what led me to writing the books. So the first books, I know you've written a, a few now at this point. So what did you learn about the, the actual process of writing? And then, and then I want to talk about the content as well, of course. So the what I learned about the process is it's really important to write if you want to write a book. <laughs> I, <laughs> I know it just seems really like, OK, is that uh, sort of like it's really important to sell real estate if you want to sell real estate? Yeah, you're going to have to lead generate. So All right, got um, it. the uh, the writing, though, I actually had felt like I had a void. So I'd been doing a, a blog for since 2009 and I'd had a number of people tell me that my stories resonated and they were sticky, if you will. I just didn't want to write another real estate book because I felt like there were there were plenty of those out there. So I wanted uh, what I, I call a, a, a different way of looking at real estate and the kind of melding together of uh, my experience in coaching and training people was that they, they kept saying they didn't have enough time. Uh, yeah. to invest in their business of personal development. And I, I finally just said, well, do you have five minutes a day? And everybody said they had five minutes a day. And I'm like, okay, I'm onto something here. So I, I call it a new genre. <laughs> I merged the, the, the typical format of like literature that is motivational or spiritual in nature, a daily reader with business content so that it's designed to be a read every day. So five minutes, right? And I felt like a lot of salespeople, real estate agents, they tend to have this phenomenon happen to them called shiny object squirrel. Um, what, 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 what? So I was like, every day will be great because it'll be different, right? So it'll be in, in, because most real estate books or business books are very linear, right? Chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, and you don't know where to stop and you don't have enough time to read the whole chapter. And then often what happens is it's a, it can be a tsunami of information. That's what a lot of training is. It's like, okay, all good. I don't know how to apply it because it's too much. So these bite-sized chunks. So at the time, I really didn't really understand the impact of that until now that I'm three and a half years later and I've seen the results. Um, it's the idea of, particularly if you do your reading in the morning as part of, say, a miracle morning routine, and we've talked about how they run the miracle morning, you're more likely if you just read a short passage and then have time to think on it about how it, you can apply it to your business and life, you're more likely to remember it than if you read 100 pages and didn't remember any of it, right, or apply any of it. So the book is full of inspiration and information that's another key component for transformation is inspiration can be sometimes kind of sweet and fluffy and information can kind of be boring and, and you got to have it but it's like okay but the putting the two together is is much more like so a, a, a combination of la la and uh, la la fluff and here take action yes well and really you know, media information so that it's yeah. something that you can use. So, yeah. you know, if you're fired, but it, it doesn't, you know, isn't anything you can apply to your business. And okay, that's, that's great. It may inspire you to do something, but I wanted to give people both. And most of it is that. Uh, so in the process of writing, I was working with a book developer slash publisher. And you talked about that because I, there's a spectrum of, of, the industry now that Amazon's changed everything um, in the writing world and the publishing world. Uh, so I being a real estate professional, I thought of myself as, or I thought of the possibility of doing it myself, kind of like a for sale by owner. And I know all of the pitfalls of for sale by owners. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm not going to go that direction. At the same time, I didn't have probably the standing in the profession in order to get a book deal. So with a traditional publisher. So I went with something that's more of a hybrid. And the one, lots of lessons learned. Um, one of the things that came out of it was that he felt like there still should be a structure <laughs> that, okay, every day is different, but there are basic principles to this, right? This business. And I'm like, I literally, I took five minutes or less and I sketched a Venn diagram and that has been true. It was true up till that point, and it's true today. And I, I look back and I go, that was a really key um, juncture because that has been the basis of 
the next book and the podcast. And so that was back to what's the value of having an, you know, an expert in their field. Uh, that was a just in its own right made that much impact. So share the books with me. You have them uh, there, there with you. Um, yeah. So the, out what, there. so what we call the big book is the real estate success of five minutes a day secrets of a top agent reveal. Now don't let the size <laughs> fool you because it's, it's only one page a day. So believe me, it's less than five minutes. Um, and then when we were talking about the structure, the, there's four key components and one of the key components of all sales, entrepreneurship, really business, any endeavor. Um, the first one is commit to get leads, right? Business development, prospecting, lead generation. Until you have a lead, you have nothing to do. You have a license, but it's of no value, right? So what I wrote next was a 66 day challenge. And you all in Keller Williams and anybody with the one thing are familiar with the 66 day challenge and we can talk about habit formation and why 66 days. But I wrote a 66 day challenge. I call it the little book. So it's a focus, a deep dive into lead generation and business development prospecting. If you want to just give a, a focus mm -hmm. and then the it, it, I, I like to say my. My um, creative endeavors keep birthing more creative endeavors. But, um, so it led to the podcast, which you can talk about at some point too. But the third book is called Flip Time, Love Life. And that came about, uh, I was on a TEDx open mic um, talk. I, as a professional real estate agent, but now author, I get invited on a lot of other podcasts, right? Sure. And one of the topics that, invariably comes up is time and productivity and habits because five minute success is a productivity habit, right? Or a productivity hack or whatever you want to call it. So I become kind of a mini expert in the productivity field. I'm telling you, it's, it's really been fascinating. And so I've really done a lot more research about, about productivity. And what I've discovered is, is time is something that every, most people, it's almost become a competitive arena. Then it's like most people yeah. like to say, how are you? The first thing you'll say is I'm, I'm busy. It's all good. I'm busy. Right. And so, but we're busy about things that may not be meaningful. And often what happens is we fill up our days and times with things we don't really want to do and we don't really care about. And so I got more into, well, why is time, um, well, it's a precious resource because it's one of it's it's not reproducible, right? <laughs> um, but there's also this whole idea of time being relative. So, if you think about it, you've had this experience, I know. If you've been in a boring meeting or you've been in traffic, what do you say? You like time just stand still, right? I just get up and leave. Okay, I can't well, do that with traffic. Right? That with traffic. But <laughs> but if you think about it, we use these phrases yeah but we look at it and we go oh my god it's so painful so like you know one minute feels like an hour right but on the other side if we're doing something we're passionate about and we love or we're with people we care about we say time flies by so einstein's the one that said time is relative i didn't discover this but if you think about it it's really not time it's really energy and 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 it's really when people say they don't have enough time, this is actually a Lazu quote, time is a created thing. It's actually a human construct. To say I don't have enough time is to say I don't want to. So I was like, well, then why don't people do what they say they want to do? Right? I mean, that is a completely different question. And how do we change this? So, so what then, did you discover uh, through that process? And, and I want to dive in because you started with the productivity piece of it. So how do you relate the energy, the time, the promise to productivity? How do you connect the dots there? So this is where the flip time came in. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you remember Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, the pyramid yeah. and how you're supposed to work your way up the pyramid. And you start with your physical needs, your basic needs, your, um, security needs, your, your relationship needs, your esteem needs, and then self-actualization. So the idea of flip time is to flip the pyramid and start with self-actualization or start okay. with meaningful work. 
So like, if you want to talk about productivity and meaningful work, what's the most meaningful work productivity wise for a real estate agent? It'll be lead generating. Lead generation, yeah. right? <laughs> and so you should start with that, sure. right? And then everything else becomes better. If you want to quote the one thing, you know, what's the one thing you could do such by doing that everything else becomes easier and necessary, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're truly lead generating first, you're putting that first, then your um, your esteem needs are going to be higher because you're going to be more successful. Your relationship needs are going to be better because you're going to be product. You're going to be um, achieving more, and your everything else is going to get better because you are going to be, um, you know, achieving at a higher level. You're going to be more likely to be uh, secure. You're going to be more likely to have the resources to take care of your physical needs. So the um, the other the what most common though happens is I find successful people in any endeavor, they, they've got the productivity figured out oftentimes, but they get up sure. there and they go, well, I'm running out of time to do something meaningful, right? I've, I've put all of this years into whether it's a midlife crisis or the, the young people all having quarter life crises now, Dan. I don't get it. But anyhow, quarter like, life, quarter life. I have experienced enough life to be having a crisis. What are you talking about? But um, anyhow, you get there. What did you run out of time to do meaningful work? And or anything meaningful. It doesn't even have to be work. Sure. Um, so the I, pardon me? I was just suggesting other things, you know, like relationships, spirituality, yes. fitness, health. Yes. important to you. Yeah. So. Yeah. The idea of flipping time and doing that first. So then I seem to still get pushed back with people like, I don't even have time to do that. And I'm like, okay, well, let's start small and build up. This is this is five minutes. Okay. We're not talking about I you need you to, you know, change everything, start small and build up, because that's a proven habit formation. What I've seen in my life and other people's lives that that flip the time and put that first then everything else does seem to get better, right? You're going to be more in alignment with yourself and what you're called to do. You're going to be in a better relationship with people because you're going to be happier, right? You're more likely to take care of yourself again, because you're putting that as a priority. Um, and so it, it's the flip time really, it should probably happen first, but most people don't start thinking about that until they've reached a certain level of, of in, in their career or profession. And, and so, but it's it's told as a story rather than as a instructional manual because well, I want to see if I got let me see if I understand this correctly. Okay. So what I hear you saying, Karen, is basically so <clears throat> most successful people have figured out the the, the production piece. Mm -hmm. How do, how can I be uh, how can I produce? And what we learned from Gary and Jay's book, the one thing is you know what is the one thing such that by doing it everything else becomes easier or unnessary, which is basically the, the, the highest priority. What I'm hearing you say is taking a piece past that of how does then your energy flow throughout into the, I don't know, the 80%. So if the, if the one thing falls in the, uh, the highest priority of your 20%, if that's going to you know, create the highest results, when you do that, and when you do that at a high level, then everything else just sort of flows downhill. Is that, and am I understanding you correctly? Absolutely. And you know, that's a great example because I never thought about the Pareto principle, but this actually sure. applies if you think about it. Yeah. So why is it that 20% achieves 80%? It's because those 20% are focusing, right, on yeah. the things that they know that are, that are going to cause them to achieve the rest of it, right? So, it, and I really, there's, there's so many applications to this, but even just like, let's break down productivity and lead generation. There are certain lead generation activities that bring me energy. Yeah. <laughs> As Marie Kondo would say, I, I, I you know, brings me joy. Um, there are some that don't, they suck me. I mean, I just like it. And I'm like, why would I do that? I don't care if you're really good at it or not. If I'm not, yeah. and I, I was like, somebody told me the other day, well, embrace the suck. And I'm like, no, no. <laughs> I mean, you embrace the suck. <laughs> I mean, I, the law of attraction, right? If I am operating at my highest and best self and I'm doing what I'm called to do, I'm going to attract a lot more yeah. that's going to be positive and help me achieve at the next level than if I'm just 
in the grind doing it because, you know, somebody said I had to. So even when you're, you're diving into this, we've gotten to where uh, we're really working on focusing on our avatar client and the people that we love to work with and love to work out with us and to seek to find more of those people, right? By focusing on what we want more of and expanding on that instead of all the other ones. I used to pride myself on being able to handle the difficult client. I'm like, okay, so it proved they did it. I don't need to keep doing it. I mean, that's a right. definition of stupidity is doing the same thing over and over again. Expecting so, different results. You're really, truly caring. You're really everything. everything. You're really designing your life, right? You're really just taking it beyond the, okay, I understand that in business, not just real estate sales, in business, that lead generation is that lever and everything else follows that. And yet, now let me get more specific about that lead generation. Let me see what what feels right to me. Let me see where I can embrace my highest and best talents, where I can in, um, embrace my, my, my greatness and feel good about what I'm doing. And now let me just double down on that and then, you know, apply that to the highest priorities. And now I can feel good about it as well. Yes, absolutely. Because I think that we, um, I, I think that that is where we're going to uh, uh, love the life we have. So that is the point of the flip time book is to love the life you have while you create the life of your dreams. So mm. instead of waiting for your life or your dreams and whatever the future point is, uh, I love it right now. I mean, go for what you love right now because you're yeah. going to be happier. Everybody's going to love being around you. You're going to be exuding this confidence and, and you know, that attracts more at the same time, because I think so many people are like, very goal driven, which I am a very goal driven person. What? I used to be really me. I used to be so focused on well, when this happens, then when this happens, when this happens, then I'll be happy. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be happy right now. <laughs> Use it now, right? I'm going to be it now. I mean, there's no guarantee. I mean, my husband's 67, and on my 60th birthday, he was in the hospital with congestive heart failure. And I'm telling you, if you cannot be okay then, I mean, when are you going to be okay? Um, so the idea is to love the life you have right now. And how can you do that now? You can do that now by doing the meaningful work or meaningful, what's meaningful to you. It may be creative. So there's lots of different calls that people are called to. Some people are called to a contribution, right? Some people are called to creativity. And I Many people, or some people have said to me, oh my gosh, I can't change my whole life. And I'm like, okay, well then just start small. Like I just, in the beginning, I really, I wrote for 30 minutes. I'm telling you, it wasn't like, I didn't overhaul everything in my life. Yeah. Just that every time I had a choice, I started to choose what would, would feed me, what would make me, you know, uh, achieve, might be my, my best self. Have you always done this, Karen? Is no. this something that's been an evolution for you? <laughs> no, I, I always had productivity figured out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and that is stead me well, right? I mean, I, I'm that's I've lived a very good life. Um, yeah. but this journey actually, and I don't know if you're familiar with Joseph Campbell and the hero's journey, and but this the woman, the female journey is the heroine journey. I feel like I've just been on it about four years. I came out of coaching on a with an executive life coach okay prior to that i had done a lot of productivity coaches and again i got the productivity thing figured out but there was just still so much missing and the crazy thing is is our production has almost doubled so mm -hmm. i've been you want to you want to talk about busy i i've got busy in space i get out busy everybody i've got you know a podcast that has two week, two times a week production i'm probably on 150 podcasts a year so i'm doing those I go to a minimum of five personal development events a year. I've got three international travels this year, um, my third book. So I've, I figured out that it's really, back to it's not busy. It's really the energy and where your focus is. So you, so you mentioned your podcast. What, uh, tell us what your podcast is so others can tune into that. 
it's so it's the number five minute success. All of it's around five minute success. Uh, we didn't talk about the other components to the real estate success in five minutes a day because the podcast has a structure that follows the book. Okay. So we talked about commit to get leads. That's the first, and that's the first key sure. um, keystone, if you will, because without a lead, nobody has anything to do. Then the next one is consult to sell. So that's the the conversion, the process, and skill. You take the buyer or seller, or if you're a dentist, your patient, if you're a church, the, the members, whatever, uh, through the process to at the end become you know a transaction, a client. And then what often happens, not just in real estate agents or salespeople, but in other th areas as well, people get stuck on this hamster wheel of transactional business, right? They're only as good as their next deal. They wake up every day and got to do it all over again. So there's principles to connect, to build, and grow. So that is sustain, scalable success, right? That's leverage. And then there's this mindset motivation piece that I call success, thinking, activities, and vision. And that surrounds the whole thing. And I found that those four components are crew with so many different arenas. It's not just real estate. It's not just sales. It's not just entrepreneurship. So I've had countless conversations with really fascinating people that I found that they all do those components. What have you learned as a podcaster? And yeah, uh, I know that you're you're interviewing some you know highly successful people, some people that have figured out certainly pr the productivity piece, and many that have figured out the the uh, life piece. <laughs> yeah, the life piece. <laughs> God bless you, right? Yeah. What, what, have you, what have you learned from your from your from your guests? From my guests, wow, the conversations. It's interesting, even though the same format with all of them, they all have a different way they do it. And back to, you know, if you want to talk about you know self actualization. That's why there's so many ways to be to to do it, right? So I'm not subscribing that what works for me would work for you, but of course, yeah. Those conversations, I would say the reason why I have found podcasting, and maybe this is a similar experience for you. Some of the conversations I'm having with people, I probably wouldn't have had if I hadn't had a podcast. And I, it is like, for example, Jeff um, Jeff Hoffman, who is the founder of Priceline and a billionaire. Well. I think that's a pretty fascinating conversation, right? Sure. What did you learn from Jeff? <laughs> oh my gosh, he's the one that really, um, in fact, I've heard him speak a couple of times because I'm in a uh -huh. mastermind that has him come speak, but he is the one that really taught me about the avatar okay. and how to uh, figure out who your avatar is and how important it is to talk to the avatar. Yeah. Um, but the other thing that he, he really taught me was, and I now understand my why behind podcasting, he developed a lot of his businesses because he wanted to travel mm. and he wanted to go to interesting places. And then he got in the music business because he wanted to, um, you know, be with musicians and have cool concerts. Uh, so I was, I was like, Oh, I get it now. I started a podcast so that I could have interesting conversations with people. Um, and so that's been the most powerful thing about it. And, but it, it sells books too. So if you want to know from the productivity sure, part sure. of it, I, that was the correlation I discovered pretty early it's, on. It sounds to me like, uh, you know, what you just described uh, about Jeff is somebody that has truly designed his life. And just from the brief, uh, you know, description that you shared there, that's certainly seems, uh, you know, somebody that is a billionaire yet, you know, is designing his life. Right. Because, um, you know, there's, there's definitely uh, a, a key nugget there to, to pay attention to. Absolutely. And I think about that because I think about, OK, you know yeah. what, you know, first of all, what is it? I My vision. Right. And then I think about, OK, that's my vision. So I think about how to do it. And then I set in place, you know, those uh, steps or action items or whatever and to create the vision. And I didn't even really know that was my vision until I started doing it. And then I go, oh, my gosh, now I understand that was what I was had a calling for. And I didn't realize it until I started actually living into it. Yeah, I would suggest, Karen, that you you knew it all along. You just only knew it subconsciously. Yes. You recognized it after the fact, I would suggest. 
Yes, and I would say that if if you're hearing in your audience is hearing a little voice, because that's my first voice was the book voice. Yeah. Like I should write a book. So people told me that too, but it was one of those things that would not go away. And I kept saying, as many people do, is that I didn't have enough time or money. And it was a major epiphany. I'd been on a, a retreat, a coaching retreat, and we were all supposed to share what was stopping us from doing what we said we want to do. And I used to would have always said the market. I would talk about all the people in my life that were, you know, making it so I couldn't do what I said I wanted to do. At that point, I said, well, I'm the only one stopping me. I mean, I'm self-employed. <laughs> what? Why now am I stopping me? Back to Lazo. Time is a creative thing. To say I don't have time is like saying I don't want to. Why was I saying this? And so then I really had to call myself out on it and I I I was like I'm gonna change this paradigm I'm going to start doing what I say I want to do and that was very powerful in itself and I won't say it was easy there was lots of challenges along the way which are another conversation but so I'm not gonna like say oh my gosh Karen did that and then everything was you know just rainbows and unicorns um but it because I was in alignment with myself and what it was I had felt called to do the more i do that the more i find that i attract uh, more to say right so it's it's become easier and it's way more fun and and so it, it may be challenging in the beginning because there was a lot of anything worthwhile yeah, you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well karen thank you very much for for being my guest today i'm really honored and how can can I get your book? Tell us uh, how to get your book. Uh, any, uh, your books, excuse me. Books. Okay. Well, Amazon is the deliverer of most books, so you can go on Amazon for all three of the books. And if you want co um, multiple copies, because sometimes offices want to give them out, as sure. um, I understand, like our Bold office is going to, our office for Bold is giving out um, a commit to get leads to all the graduates. So if you want to do that, just reach out to me. The website is the number five minute success. Same with Facebook, social media and the podcast so you can and you can pretty much google Very karen cool. briscoe and i think i take over the first several pages